Welcome to the WHHI Daily News. I'm Robin Zimmerman. Let's begin with today's news headlines. The saga of the Hilton Head Bridges will be fraught with drama over the next week after a second four-hour-plus town council workshop in four days attended by hundreds. The council is going to attempt to slow down the decision-making process to get what it wants, more time to debate whether to build new bridges to the island and what that will look like, a process that's already run for more than six years. Well, the county and state have a deadline of next Friday to approve their plan for a single six-lane bridge from Bluffton to the mainland, running alongside the current bridges, but going over Pinckney Island and reconnecting with the current William Hilton Parkway. But there's significant opposition that doesn't want a big piece of concrete connecting the two land masses at a cost of nearly $500 million, not all of it paid for yet. State Senator Tom Davis will ask the state for more time before funding is pulled. And town manager Mark Orlando is taking the weekend to create a conditional approval document with all of the council's concerns. Well, the two Hardyville residents shot to death earlier this week have been identified. 40-year-old Alicia Dykes and 38-year-old Bernard Lyles were shot at the Walsh Drive Apartments off Main Street in Hardyville Tuesday afternoon. 49-year-old Charles Saunders of New York City was arrested a couple of hours later in Ridgeland. And authorities say the trio had an altercation in the apartment parking lot. And Saunders followed the two victims into their apartment and then he opened fire. It's the first fatal shooting in Jasper County since January. Well, the days will get shorter between today and December after yesterday's summer solstice. We'll actually lose about three minutes of daylight between now and the end of the month, and about 35 minutes by the end of July. And by the first day of fall in September, we'll have two hours and 12 minutes less daylight, and still 12 hours and 11 minutes from sunrise to sunset. And finally, there's at least a half a dozen farmers markets in the low country that will keep you busy searching for fresh seafood and produce. The Farmers Market at Coastal Discovery Museum is open every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Honeyhorn. Also on Tuesdays, the Farmers Market and the shops at Sea Pine Center runs from 10 a.m. to 2. On Wednesdays, there's the Root and Bloom Market from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Martin Family Park on Boundary Street in Bluffton. The Hilton Head Community Market is Saturdays from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. in Shelter Cove Community Park on Hilton Head Island. And finally, uh, the Port Royal Farmers Market runs year-round on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to noon at the Naval Heritage Park. For more information on these stories and many more, please check out the media sources listed on your screen and remember to follow us on Facebook. And check us out on our website at whhitv.com. And you can email us at news at whhitv.com if you have a news story or a news tip. And now let's check in with Justin Jarrett on sports. Justin, do you have an update? Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. And if today's report seems repetitive, it's because some clear trends have emerged during this summer's Diamond Youth Baseball and Softball All-Star Tournaments. Bluffton Softball All-Stars swept through the district, winning the 8-and-under, 10-and-under, and 12-and-under titles. And B-Town's tiniest All-Stars also took the 6-and-under Rookie League Baseball crown. But for the last two weeks on the baseball diamonds, it's been all about the island. Hilton Head's 12 and under All-Stars joined the 8U and 10U teams as district champs with a 13-2 win over Bluffton last night at Burton Wells Complex, finishing an undefeated run through the bracket just like the younger Island boys. After scoring six runs in the sixth inning to stay alive Wednesday, Bluffton battled to keep it close early, but Hilton Head broke it open with nine runs in the third. Bluffton's Carson Tucker blasted a two-run homer to break up the shutout, but Hilton Head got out of the inning without further damage to end it early on the 10-run rule and advance to the state tournament next month in Sumter. Several loco golfers competed against the state's best this week at the SCJGA Grant Bennett Florence Invitational, where Hilton Head Prep's Kate Criscunas finished fifth, with Hilton Head Christian Academy's Sage Bradshaw tied for sixth and Bluffton's Luke Block tied for tenth. Hilton Head's Jeep Patrick will also rep the loco on the links this weekend at the first team national championship in Clemson. We'll talk about all of this local sports news and much more on a new episode of the Loco Sports Lowdown, streaming live at 9 p.m. tonight on the Loco Media Network. 
For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks, Justin. And now we have our weather forecast from Maria. Maria, take it away. Thanks, Robin. Yep, so taking a look ahead, after all the storm-like weather we've been having all week with high winds and rip currents, we're finally going to see those thunderstorms rolling into our area this weekend. So taking a look at Saturday, it's going to be cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. The rain is supposed to get heavy at times, so if you're going to be on the road, do be careful and keep an eye out for any flash flood warnings. Good news is the storm should be clearing up by the evening. Taking a look at the temperatures, Hillness give a high of 84, low of 77, Bluffins give a high of 86, a low of 75, and Beaufort and a high 87 and a low of 76. Come Sunday, it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. Then we are going to see another thunderstorm roll into our area later in the afternoon. But again, it should be clearing up by the evening. Hillness give a high 87, a low of 76. Bluffton's a high 89, a low of 75. And Buford's in a high 88, and a low of 75. The sunrise for this weekend is to be at 617 and sunsets to be at 832. Taking a look at the tides. Saturday, high tides will be at 10.06 a.m. and low tides will be at 5.16 p.m. And then come Sunday, high tides will be at 10.53 a.m. and low tides will be at 6.03 p.m. Taking a look into next week, we are going to get a break from the rain, but the temperatures are going to go up Monday through Wednesday. It's supposed to be sunny to partly cloudy, with highs up getting up into the mid-90s and lows are going to be in the 70s. That's it for your low country crawl space weather. Let's hit it back to the desk. Coming up after the break, we'll find out about an exciting scavenger hunt happening on the island this summer. Stay tuned.